Okay, just thought I'd quickly show you some soldering with the uh, this little micro torch. I've already been doing some soldering with it, so set myself up here. What we're going to do is just solder this terminal end on. I've already partially done it, but I'm going to reheat it and do it some more because there's I didn't get the solder all the way around the backside. So here we go. Just a tiny little microflame. Brown's gas is very powerful though and puts a lot of heat energy right into the metal because this is coated copper. Heating on the one side heats the other side too. So it's just about warm enough. And here we go. Feed that solder right into that joint until we have solder dripping off the bottom, which I just saw. Okay, that takes care of that. Now, we don't want that metal exposed, so we'll put some heat shrink on there. And the browns gas works really well for heat shrink as well. Actually, I just need to trim that heat sink material back a little bit. There we go. Now when you're doing the heat shrink, of course, you want to have the torch quite a ways away from the material. Just like that. Done. And here we go again. We're just going to finish soldering this um, negative terminal now. So first I turn on the gas to the maximum velocity that I can get without losing pressure, which is right there. And then light the flame. And we're going to put that solder there. Just, okay, just get some solder ready. Start heating that terminal end. We want the flame to, like that little nozzle, that little feather in the middle of the flame to just touch the metal. You don't want to get too close because you don't want to uh, cause the flame velocity, the gas velocity coming out of the torch tip to get too low and then it causes it to uh, backfire. Okay, here we go. Just start feeding in that solder. Get some more. Feed it in there. Now you can vary the amount of heat that's going into your work by varying the distance to and from your, uh, <laughs> and just having a little trouble feeding this in around the leg of the stand here. There we go, nicely soldered. And that was heating it from cold. So this little tiny flame very powerful. Now we'll just uh, yeah, put the heat shrink tubing on. And again, the flame can work really well for that. You just want to be sure that the uh, 
that flame doesn't get too close because it'll actually burn the heat shrink tubing. What you want is the hot air kind of portion of the flame, which, ah, if you get too wet, you can have the flame go out because of a water droplet. Now it's good that happened so people can see. If necessary, you can always clear the orifice by just simply putting air through it with a syringe too. And But every once in a while you want to actually take the torch tip off and open up the gas thing completely and uh, shake any water droplets out. You you actually want water to accumulate in this backfire arrestor because as long as it's wet, it uh, will make sure that no backfire ever goes through it. So now we'll just again get the maximum gas velocity we can get without the uh, torch pressure dropping which is right right there and I just put it up to my ear so I can hear the gas velocity that's one way I like to make sure that the gas is coming out properly okay here we go so we just use the hot jet of air that is uh, generated by the torch to melt the heat shrink. And it makes a really nice job. Just like that. Another one done.